Hello and welcome back. In the last lesson, we uh, did some work to, to create that said email function on our user class. Uh, we also just tested out our code in the router just to make sure that um, it was all working properly. And so now we're going to move on and we are going to set up our last function here that we need to do. And that is going to be the set password function. I know this is not a production level application that we're writing here, but I think just as best practice, uh, what we don't want to do is be uh, storing passwords in plain text ever. Even though this is just a small um, example course, I'm going to go through the process of uh, setting up a password hash and storing it a as a hash instead of a plain text. We're going to go through this process now. So. We're going to say set password. We're going to take in the password that is that is coming in from the API and then we will do our try catch block as we have always been doing it. Uh, we'll set up an error there and then we'll throw um, an error if there is one. And now we need to start thinking about how we are going to set up this password hash. I think the first step what I want to do is do a validation. So we can say uh, message.validate single and then this will take in the password and then I want to do a constraints and then at this stage we don't have it but we'll go write it now. We'll say constraints.password and then we'll head on over to our constraints file. We'll create a new function on here for password to set up these constraints. And we'll do constraints, we'll set up this object and then the presence as we've set up before, we need to set up this object and say allow empty and then that's obviously going to be false because we require the password. The password is going to be of type string and then we'll just set up a key here for length and then an object here with a key of minimum and then we'll just put the number in 10 here. Or just for testing, let's just make it 6. But you get the idea uh, with this uh, validate.js package, we were able to, to write in some different things. Uh, if you wanted to uh, write in a regex so that it has certain uppercase, lowercase characters, you can do that kind of thing. But you understand the pattern for now. We've got that validation check here. What we can do is set up our conditional check as we have been doing. We'll set that message. If there is a message, we want to return that message because um, that is not a valid password at this stage according to our rules that we've set up. And then now this is what we need to start thinking about is we would normally uh, we'd do a, a this dot security dot password hash. And this is what we don't want to do is just set that password here in plain text. What we want to do is kind of hash that password and store the hash of the password. So it's not stored in, in plain text. So we're going to leverage an NPM package for this. And this package is called a bcrypt and you can go search for it at, at npmjs.com. And you'll see there's also the, um, there's a lot of downloads. People are using this a lot. We can just copy the install command here. But basically you can take a read through uh, the, this documentation. You'll see a basic setup here. We notice that it is an asynchronous function. We import it into our folder here. And then you'll see to hash a password, we, there's a function that we can call. You'll see there's two techniques here. One that uses a salt and a hash in separate function calls. The second one is what I'm, I'm looking for here. It, it auto gens a salt and as well as a hash. So if this is um, not very familiar to you, don't worry about it now. You can definitely do your own research here. But basically salting and hashing is a way for us to hash our password in a way that people can't just see what the plain text value is in the database without doing some complex cryptography and that kind of thing. So I'm going to install our bcrypt folder. You should be used to this by now. All right, so now bcrypt has been installed. We can just double check that it's here in our package.json. That's looking good. We can go to the top of our user class. Let's require our bcrypt folder and then we'll just do bcrypt in a string like that. And now what we can do is instead of just storing our plain text password, we can reference the, the bcrypt crypt folder. We can call this hash function. We'll take in the password, which is coming through our function here. 
And then the second argument will be the number of rounds that it, it does in terms of hashing. We'll just set it as 10. Once this is done, we'll just return out of this function. And then as we did notice in the documentation, this is an asynchronous function. So I'm going to mark this function as async because this might take a while to do, especially if it's uh, going through 10 rounds of hashing. What I want to do now is just do a quick run through of this, just so that you get the idea of what's happening. I'm going to log the password as it comes through. Uh, so we'll just do a console log here, and then I want to do a second console log once it's been hashed. And then I'll just reference this dot security dot password hash to see what that looks like. Cool. So with this done, I just want to do a quick test. So we'll go to the root app. And then we're going to call user.setPassword. This needs to be a string, right? So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. And I just want to take a look at what's happening in our server here. We'll do an npm start. And um, as you can see, once I started my server, I've made a mistake. Uh, this should just be a bcrypt. So that's my mistake, but that's what happens. And so I'm going to restart my server and you'll see now we get express servers listening on 3000 and let's just run the register here. It's obviously return a promise because as we said, it's um, an asynchronous request. <laughs> so let's just go back now into our user. And so another error that I've made here is um, we need to await this uh, function call if it's asynchronous. And so that is why we got that promise returned. So I'm just going to save. I'm going to kill my server and restart it. I'm going to head over to Postman. We're going to hit send. And then now you can see that I've got everything working here. The incoming password is 123456. And then this is the hashed password. And so this is what eventually will be stored in the database. And so if someone actually gets access to our database, they would actually never know what the actual value of the original password was. So that is just a little bit of extra work that we needed to do to set the password. But now with all of that work done, I think we are finished with our user class. It's looking really good. I think we're going to take a break now and in the next lesson, we're going to start wiring this up to our router in a more robust way. We're going to take the, the values that are coming in from, from the router and then assigning it to our user class. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Cheers for now.